So yeah, I'm here to tell you uh, why the standard library is unreadable. Uh, and I'm sure all of you have debugged C++ code and ended up inside your standard library implementation. Here is an example of what that might look like. <laughs> this is uh, from MSVC, and I want to make it very clear. I'm not calling out any particular information, sorry, implementation for being unreadable. Uh, this is just, this needs to be the case. And I'm going to hopefully explain why. <laughs> so um, I came upon this because I had to write my own small part of a standard library because I was writing a operating system kernel for a hobby project that I do. And for various reasons, it doesn't make sense to really port a standard library to running in kernel mode in an operating system because there are no depend you don't have any of the dependencies that are required to run a standard library implementation. So if you want, but you do also want like data structures like vector and stuff. So you end up doing some of those things yourself. So while I was doing this, I ended up reading a lot of standard library code to see how other people did it. So um, let me talk about the reasons that I've discovered, and this is not an exhaustive list. So everybody's seen the underscores. Like, the reason the underscores look ridiculous, but they're there for a reason, I promise you. And it's because uh, of name collisions. Everybody uses standard library. Like, every single C++ project uses the standard library. So that means any identifier gets injected into everybody's program. Now, it's all in the standard library standard namespace, but you know, people can abuse that. People can do whatever the, with your code, you know? And they will, because every C++ project is using the standard library. So you will see usually the double underscore and oftentimes the underscore followed by a capital letter. Um, the, re the other reason is tech debt. And it's because uh, these versions of the standard library, they have to, these implementations like libc++, the Visual Studio MSVC uh, library that they have, and uh, lib standard C++, uh, they have to work, you have to be able to go and change your compiler into C++ 98 mode and be able to compile that. So now they're not gonna write different versions of their own standard library. There's just one implementation. It's just got like, if defs everywhere, it's got macros everywhere to try to conditionally compile it, and that's really hard to read. Um, and the other reason is it has to work for everybody. Under every circumstance, every corner case needs to be covered, and that's a lot of code. And that's just the way it is. And the other reason is ABI, but I don't have enough time to talk about ABI, so we're just gonna go over, skip that. <laughs> so, and the other reason is the third and final, well, not the final reason, it's a non-exhaustive list, is the fact that the standard library has to be super heavily optimized because you have to be able to trust that when you're using the standard library that it, it's reasonably quick, you know. Uh, we always get the advice, you know, use standard algorithms, standard algorithms are fast and safe and they make your code simpler. And that has to be true. <laughs> so they often have to do weird looking things. Uh, and so I'm gonna finish this with showing a snippet of code from, this is from libc++, uh, this is from the uh, shared pointer implementation. If you wrote this code, I'm not calling you out. This is the way it has to be. <laughs> but why don't we start cleaning this up by removing the underscores? There we go, gets a little bit nicer it looks a little bit more like C++ that you might actually write, but we still have all these macros, see? This only works in C++ 20, but you know, we have to have this compiler be able to use C++ 17, et cetera. So why don't we get rid of the macros? Let's say we're just doing C++ 20. Great, that's cleaned up quite a bit. Uh, but there's even more we can do. We're only using C++ 20, why are we using enable if? We have requires, so let's use requires. And hopefully, 
the code has come out, and you realize that this function basically doesn't do anything at all. <laughs> but it's the way it has to be. So thank you. I'm Jake Del Mastro. Hope you enjoyed the talk. <laughs> and links to my stuff. <laughs> <laughs>